Hello, this is Dr. Ginny Barrow. I am on my walk. It's a gorgeous day here in northern New Jersey, 66 degrees, which I've been waiting for desperately. And I'm going out during my lunch break for a quick, brisk 30 minute walk. 15 minutes there, 15 minutes back. And I wanted to stop and check in with you on the topic of forgiveness. Today, when I was running my mastermind with women and leaders who are part of my program, the card that I pulled was the forgiveness card. And in that, there, was, there were two components. The first one is forgiving those pe people in our lives for having bad days, for making mistakes, for not always being kind to us. And the second component is forgiveness with ourselves, forgiving ourselves for choices we've made in the past, maybe not making the best decisions ever, and for things that we wish we would have done differently that we can't change right now, other than perhaps say, I'm sorry. And my group, as well as I, felt such a release when you take a few minutes to be self-aware about the things that would benefit in your life by bringing some forgiveness to it. So forgiveness to those leaders or managers that we've had in the past who didn't really know better about how to guide us and promote and advocate for us. I always say that people are doing the best they can with the resources that they have. Most people, many people are not great leaders. And it's not, I believe, a fault of their own. They haven't had the role models to emulate to be great leaders. So we're really lucky when we run into a leader who's been not only reliable, but resourceful, compassionate, caring, and who have helped us create a path for ourselves. Many leaders don't have those tools. They're barely surviving their, themselves, little less giving us some of the resources to help us push forward. So that's one area for giving the people and the leaders who led you, who now looking back, you may say, wow, that person really did not help at all. If anything, going to work was a battle every day because I had to not only contend with my work, but I also had to contend with him or her and uh, I dreaded going to work. So that could be one possibility. And on the other side, there are the leaders who have supported us, who have given us opportunities, who believed in us, who believed in our potential, and who opened doors for us. And with those leaders and for those leaders, I am so grateful because I've been very lucky to have been under the, under the influence of some amazing inclusive leaders who saw the potential in me and who were able to advocate and be my ally at work and in that way help me ascend through the ranks in my corporate roles. And right now, as a business owner, I'm grateful for leaders like Susanna Bowman and the leaders that I interviewed for my upcoming book, Healing Leadership, because they are the people who are willing to step out of their comfort zone, who are willing to take a few minutes of their time and share their wisdom and their insights and experiences with you and with me and to do it from a place of contribution. There's really nothing in it for them other than to help and contribute to uh, other people around them. So I'm grateful to them. I'm grateful for my mentors and my, my teachers who take the time to guide me and coach me. 
and that's something that you can improvise you cannot improvise experience and knowledge it's something that you acquire over time and then you're lucky that you get to share it with other people so that's forgiveness of other people in the case of work and even co-workers co-workers who are going through a really tough time what does it look like to forgive them because they are doing the best they can with the resources that they have they don't look at your world from your perspective they're looking at, at the world from their perspective and they may be feeling overwhelmed with responsibilities and many of us are living through mental illnesses depression anxiety and many other emotions that are causing us to slow down to go into negative mind frames etc so it's hard for us to to judge other people based on how they're reacting right about now and if we could take a moment and perhaps consider that there's so much going on with people that we may not know about I think that will give us a little extra compassion and empathy toward the people that we are surrounded with who may not be behaving in a way that we would and that tends to be our perspective I would never do that why would they do that so the minute that somebody else has a different set of rules than we do we judge them right and so there's a reason why those people have their set of rules and I'm not saying that I agree with everybody uh, and what everybody does that's not the case at all what I am saying is that I do try to put myself in their shoes or at least Look at it from the perspective that I'm sure that there's an aspect of what they're doing that I don't understand. And that if I did understand it, then I would be able to see perhaps why they're going at it that way. So that's forgiveness of other people. When it comes to forgiving ourselves, my goodness, there is so much about ourselves that we need to forgive. How we went about making a decision in our lives that have cost us a lot perhaps even you know as as early as what you ended up studying in school what you went for and why you did it you know that's definitely a source of regret sometimes for people and even now one of the most I guess prevalent reasons why people feel regret and shame is for what they did with their careers and how they didn't take charge of their career and owned it and instead kind of went to work every day did their job and were relying on other people to advocate for them and to help them grow in their careers when in fact like I said everybody's busy with their own life with their own work everybody's busy trying to look good for their manager and in the process if we don't have the right role models we forget that we are responsible for a team of people and not only hiring them but hiring developing and mentoring and coaching them so they, be, they can become the best that they can be doing their work and above and beyond that become the kind of humans that they have the potential to become so that's another source of shame sometimes regret and the truth is that there's nothing we can do about the past the past is behind us it is when we are fearless leaders we look forward we're visionaries we live in the moment we plan for the future and we envision that future that we desire that compelling future and take steps every single day toward that future but what happens to many of us is we get so bogged down with what we don't want I don't want to work for a company like this I don't want to work for a person like that I don't want to be in this position I don't want to be in this role and what we forget to do while we are doing our bitching is we forget what we want what kind of roles we would be good at because that role leverages our strengths what is our unique value proposition? 
what is our areas of strengths and superpowers what enlighten us and what energizes us in terms of work and what is the future that you want do you want to eventually buy your place um, do you want to expand in a specific field or learn something even more about your your field that you're in what is it that you want for that compelling future and when you think about it don't forget to look at the whole wheel of life what do you want to see in your relationships many of you have heard this I'm sure that life is all about the relationships that we build what do you want what about in your spiritual world what is your connection to a higher power like what do you want it to be if you believe in a higher power how about your emotional house where are you most of the time are you angry or do you live peacefully are you somebody who's determined or somebody who is easy to quit think about where you want to be and what you want to do in the next 12 months to create that compelling future and if you want to really look at your life holistically consider what kind of lifestyle lights me up what kind of lifestyle would energize me and how can I take what I already have and begin to move toward that type of future that to me my friends is where the magic is at it's living in the moment and also in that moment enjoying as much as you can and looking at that compelling future for yourself and so the topic of forgiveness to come full circle when it comes to that topic consider who do you need to forgive in your life perhaps it's a family member perhaps it's a parent or brother or sister or a child your partner your husband who do you need to forgive your wife a teacher a friend who you thought wronged you and in your personal life personally what do you need to forgive yourself hi hi doggy <laughs> How do, you, how do you need to forgive yourself? What do you need to forgive of yourself? We're not perfect, we all make mistakes. And all we can do is look forward. As fearless leaders, we look at today and we look at the future. And we use the past as a way to learn, glean lessons, and move forward. So that's my message for you today. I hope this serves you. And you know you can connect with me at call with Ginny.com. I'll see you soon.